Okay, our scripture reading this morning, Daniel chapter 11, beginning in verse 33, and we'll read until the end of chapter 12. And those, and those of the people who understand shall instruct many, yet for many days they shall fall by the sword and flame, by captivity and plundering. Now when they fall, they shall be aided with a little help, but many shall join with them by intrigue. And some of those of understanding shall fall to refine them, purify them, and make them white until the time of the end, because it is still for the appointed time. Then the king shall do according to his own will. He shall exalt and magnify himself above every god, shall speak blasphemies against the god of gods, and shall prosper till the wrath has been accomplished. For what has been determined shall be done. He shall regard neither the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall exalt himself above them all. But in their place he shall honor a God of fortresses, and a God which his fathers did not know he shall honor with gold and silver, with precious stones and pleasant things. Thus he shall act against the strongest fortresses with a foreign God, which he shall acknowledge and advance its glory, and he shall cause them to rule over many and divide the land for gain. At the time of the end, the king of the south shall attack him, and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind, with chariots, horsemen, and with many ships, and he shall enter the countries, overwhelm them, and pass through. He shall also enter the glorious land, and many countries shall be overthrown, but these shall escape from his hand, Edom, Moab, and the prominent people of Ammon. He shall stretch out his hand against the countries, and the land of Egypt shall not escape. He shall have power over the treasures of gold and silver, and over all the precious things of Egypt. Also, the Libyans and Ethiopians shall follow at his heels. But news from the east and the north shall trouble him. Therefore, he shall go out with great fury to destroy and annihilate many. And he shall plant the tents of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end, and no one will help him. At that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time. And at that time your people shall be delivered, every one who is found written in the book. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, Shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. Then I, Daniel, looked, and there stood two others, one on this river bank and the other on that river bank. And one said to the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, How long shall the fulfillment of these wonders be? Then I heard the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand to heaven, and swore by him who lives forever, that it shall be for a time, times, and half a time. And when the power of the holy people has been completely shattered, all these things shall be finished. Although I heard, I did not understand. Then I said, My Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Many shall be purified, made white, and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And from, that, and from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up, there shall be 1,290 days. Blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1,335 days. But you, 
go your way till the end, for you shall rest and will arise to your inheritance at the end of the days. And may the Lord add his blessing to the reading from his word this morning. You may be seated. Well, we've been uh, studying the book of Daniel now for the past three and a half months. Um, and hopefully it's been an exciting study from that perspective for you. And um, we have seen as we've gone through the book that um, God has used the life of Daniel um, to bring such a great, great impact. But clearly that impact has occurred because of himself. It's the impact not only of Daniel's life, but really his life because of his God. And we stated that when we got to the, the prophetic portions, that we would see the impact of his writing. And we talked, um, I even showed a picture um, back of the Qumran Caves um, and how um, it was in the, the, the Dead Sea Scrolls is what really opened all this up from the perspective of the liberals hating it because just one little Arab boy was throwing rocks one day and he threw the rock up into the cave and heard it and went up and he found all these old writings. And uh, in these writings throughout these 13 caves, there were a lot of Daniel's writings. And it bore testimony to the fact that Daniel's writings actually were as old as was declared. Liberals wanted to make the fact that these writings had to have come later because there's no way that as we've seen the detail, there's no way that anybody could have the detail that Daniel has had. The book of Daniel is broken up in two main sections. We saw verse, chapters 1 through 6 were historical, chapters 7 through 12 are prophetical. But as we've seen, there was a whole lot of prophecy thrown into chapters 1 through 6. And chapters 7 through 12 has been chock full of history. So last week, I probably preached over an hour, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I saw the timing when I did the, the video later, okay? So, yeah, it was actually like an hour and 15 minutes. Anyway, so, but who's counting? Anyways, but this whole 372 years of history. As we come into this, um, this final prophecy, chapters 10 through 12, which we looked at the first half of, we see that actually, as a reminder of, and no, it's not going to move today. Um, and so, that Daniel chapter 8, I know, I, oh, I, I let you guys down. See, the last couple times I've had this, just so you know, I had it so that the, the goat would come over and he would ram into the ram. Anyways, but not today, no special effects today, so sorry I let you down. Um, Anyways, so, but in chapter 8, you had the prophecy of the ram and the goat, right? And it talks about Greece, how Persia, sorry for those who watch this later. Anyways, but those who are, um, was Persia was the, the ram, and then um, Alexander the Great would rise up, and he would come across the whole earth, and he would destroy Persia, okay? So we saw that in chapter 8, but then it continued on in chapter 8, talking about um, the time of the end, quote unquote, part of the, um, at that part where it was the Maccabean revolt. We'll talk about that again in a moment. And then in chapter nine, Daniel has the prophecy where there's going to be seventy sevens. Each one of those sevens is a period of seven years, and so it was a prophecy of four hundred and ninety years. That prophecy was broken up into two major sections, the 483 years, the 62 and 7, so 483 years, which was come from the time of the decree of Artaxerxes to rebuild Jerusalem until the cutting off of Messiah. Gap. Then there would be this gap period. And then at some future period, the final seven-year period would be fulfilled, okay? And so we talked about that then, okay? And we'll talk about it again in a moment. But you have on your sermon note sheet, if you have an introduction, a quote from Daniel 9, verse 26, I think it is, 27, where it talks about that final year and how the, the 
Antichrist or the leader of that day, the king of that day, and we'll talk about that because that's the king of the north, okay? That the king comes and he's going to make a covenant with your people, with Israel, for seven years. And in the middle of the seven years, three and a half years into that, he's going to break the covenant, okay? And then we're going to have the abomination of desolation and all that kind of, kind of stuff, how it plays out. So those two prophecies that Daniel's given are given more detail here in Daniel chapter 10 through Daniel chapter 12. Last week, we spent a long time going through more detail of the 483 years, okay? Hopefully that's, that you, you figured that one out, okay? As we came through it and we saw at the end, this is his way transition, okay? We saw at the end of those 400, uh, 372 years, sorry, 372 years that Antiochus Epiphanes IV, okay, Antiochus IV Epiphanes, would, would be the one who was reigning, and he would come down, okay, because he wanted to take over. He had the Seleucids up north, king of the north, Seleucids, king of the south, the Ptolemies, okay? And again, I said, note what's between the king of the north and the king of the south. It's Israel, the glorious land, the promised land, okay? And Israel is bearing the, the, the brunt of the battle, Okay, because the Seleucids are coming down, the Ptolemies are coming up, they're meeting together, and, 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 and they're fighting there. So, in the end, the, the Romans now are starting to build up. Okay, the Romans are becoming more powerful, and they side with the Ptolemies down in Egypt. Remember, these aren't Egyptians, these are Greeks and Greeks. Okay, these are the ones after Alexander died, the, the kingdom was divided to his four generals. Okay, Cassander, up over here. In Lysicomus, they go away, okay, because Rome is starting to build, and they wipe those guys out, okay? But the two major contenders then are the Seleucids coming in the Syrian Empire and the Ptolemies down in Greece. And so they're fighting against each other, okay? They're battling against each other. But Antiochus IV thinks he has an opening, and so he comes down. He's going to try to, to wipe out the Ptolemies. He's going to take over everything. But what he finds out when he gets there is the Romans have shown up. Okay, and so he can't fight the Romans, so he goes away upset, he stops in Jerusalem, and that's when he does all the, the really prophetic major ugly damage to Jerusalem, okay? Um, you can see that he offers swine on the altar, he sets up an idol of Zeus in the temple, he totally contaminates the temple, okay? And he sets in course, uh, in, course uh, in motion, the course of the, the final parts of the history of when... Um, Mattathias, who's the father of the Maccabeans, so Judas Maccabeus was the leader, and um, I know this is flying for some of you as a review, but we went through a lot of this in detail earlier, uh, weeks ago, okay? And so this is just all review bringing us into this moment, okay? And so uh, Mattathias begins the, the whole revolt. Judas, his son, ca carries it on. It's what was known as the Maccabean Revolt. You can read 1 Maccabees, 2 Maccabees, okay? They're not part of the Bible. However, they are historical documents, and it's all about this time, okay? And so we, the, <clears throat> it's amazing when you read the book of Daniel, and then you read these other historical documents, and you realize the detail in which God has given us of beforehand of things that were going to happen in the future, okay? And so in Daniel then 11... 10 into 11, he gives us, again, 372 years of detailed history. Now, that brings us to where we are, okay? Because we have this king of the north that's going to come. He fights against the king of the south, right? But we pick it up here. Uh, so I, that's why I had Chuck begin reading in verse 33, because our transition point actually comes in verse 36. But we want to do a little bit of the review there, okay? So note beginning then, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to verse 32 it says, those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flattery. But the people who know their God shall be what? Shall be strong. And those of the people who understand shall instruct many. So those who are believers at this time, so we're back at this time, those who are believers are going to stand strong for the Lord, and they're going to seek to instruct others about what is happening, okay? Um, verse 35 some of those of understanding shall fall to refine them, purify them, make them white until the time of the end, because it is still for the appointed time. Okay, So we come to this point where that at this point, there's going to be persecution that's going to go on. True believers, okay, those who are of understanding, they're going to suffer for their faith. Okay, Until when? 
Until when? Until the end. Until the time of the end. Do you see that? Okay? There's a, there's a stop point here. That this period is going to go on until the time of the end. Gap. Just like we saw in Daniel chapter 9. Okay? Between the 483 years and then the final seven years. There's a gap. God allows there to be this mystery. This gap. Okay? Remember when we sh I showed the picture of the mountains, the, the mountaintops, when we look at prophecy, the telescopic nature of prophecy, and, and that there's time that goes on, if you would, in the valley between the mountaintops. We just don't see that. All we see when we look at prophecy are mountaintops. God shows us bits and pieces, okay? And sometimes, I almost put up a picture of when I was in the plane in, a, in, in the Northwest, and there was um, Mount St. Helen and Mount Adams and Mount Rainier, uh, because when I took the picture, they weren't in the order of their distance. Sometimes prophecies, that, that's way as well. We don't necessarily have them in order. Sometimes we're just given details, and they're kind of, and if you don't understand that, read Isaiah 60 to 66, and you'll get it, okay? Because prophecy is just kind of all mixed up sometimes. And so we're going to see that in chapter 12 as we get to that. There's going to be a lot of details of the end times that are given to us, but not necessarily given to us chronologically, okay? So, so we have, though, this time of the end that we're coming into. So there's going to be this refinement of those of, with understanding until the end, okay? So now we pick it up um, with then going into this end time, verse 36. Then the king shall do according to his own will. So who's the king? Well, instantly we think, oh, Antiochus, the fourth. No, remember, <coughs> it's till the end. And just as we saw through the first 30-something verses how we ran through lots of kings, both to the north and the south. Remember that? We even talked about Berenike from the south, and we talked about Cleopatra coming from the north into the south. Okay, So we even talked about some of the daughters being planted in there. It was 372 years. Well, gap. Okay, We don't know how long the gap is because God didn't tell us how long the gap is. Does, does that make sense? Okay, A lot of people want to know. I hope you're, you're going to be sorely disappointed if you came today for, 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 for me to nail, nail down details for you because I'm not a prophet, son of a prophet. I'm not God. I don't know the details. It hasn't happened yet, so I don't know how it's going to play out. But I'm going to, hopefully, we'll talk about it, and we'll have a little bit more understanding. I think when we get to ch chapter 12, you're going to be like, okay, maybe he's coming today. So anyways, so it's kind of a lot, a lot of fun, okay? So anyways, so here we got this guy. But what I'm going to do, uh, you, have you, you have on your sermon note sheet seven things, details, descriptions that were given regarding this king's exploits, okay? We, it's, not, it's not the king of the north. It's this king who's going to arise in the end time. There's going to be a, and now, we believe that probably he is from the north, but not necessarily is he a Seleucid, okay? So he's going to come from, and we'll see this in a moment, okay? Because he's going to be from the north of Israel in some manner. Where, I don't know, but he's going to be north of Israel. And what do we read? First of all, he shall do according to his own will. He'll do according to his own will. What does that mean to you? What does it mean to you? He won't answer to anyone, won't answer to anyone which means he has what? Authority. Absolute authority. He's got authority. He's got power to do whatever he wants to do. Now, you can bring in that anything you want. Is he, is he uh, somebody big in the United Nations? Is he somebody else? I mean, there's a whole lot of things that run through my brain when I try to think about well, who could this guy be, you know? But it hasn't happened, you know? I mean, it's amazing to me. If, if, you, if you've ever studied some of this stuff out, it's amazing to me when people um, point fingers, you know, and it's, oh, this is this guy, it's this guy, it's going to be this guy. <laughs> you don't know. You're taking a guess, okay? And remember what it says in the Old Testament about a false prophet, okay? When he declares something and it's not true, what should you do with him? Stone him. I really don't want to be stoned. So I hold back and I'm making any of these declarations, okay? But this guy's going to have absolute power. He's going to do according to his own will. He's going to exalt and magnify, magnify himself above what? Every god. Note it's a little g, god, because there are lots of gods. That means he's going to exalt himself even above Buddha and above Confucius. He's going to put himself above all the Hindu gods. And he's going to, we're going to see in a moment, he's going to put himself above the one true God. Do you understand? Why would somebody do that? Because they think what? They're God. Okay? They're, because he has absolute power. He has absolute authority. He doesn't give an account to anybody. So he's going to think that he's it. 
He's not going to give an account to anybody. Rather, he's going to exalt himself and magnify above God. He's going to speak blasphemies against the God of gods. Now, who is the God of gods? Yahweh. Yahweh. The one true God, the creator of heavens and the earth, the ones that you worship. Okay? Yahweh became flesh, dwelt among us. We know him as Jesus. Okay? Yahweh is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Mind-boggling to me, but that's who he is, right? That's his name. Yahweh, that's what he declared to, to Moses. By his name he shall be known, right? So Yahweh means the one who exists. That's who he is. So he is the one true God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, right? Of all things that are are. But this individual, this king, is going to not only exalt himself above all that is called God, but in my brain, he knows there's what? A one true God. He knows it. It's the God of gods. And he knows it. And he's going to blaspheme his name. He's going to, bl- he's, he's going to purposely set himself against the one true God. Buddy, I don't want to be in his shoes. Do you get it? It's a fearful thing to be in the hands of an angry God. That's just as a sinner. Could you imagine being the leader who's going to be leading the people to go against. Now, again, you can read about this guy a little bit more in Revelation chapter 12, all the way through chapter 19, okay, where we talk about the last three and a half years of the tribulation period, quote-unquote tribulation period. I hate the the term, but that's what usually is used. But that tribulation period is the last seven years of Daniel's vision, okay? The first three and a half years of that final seven-year period occurs in the front part of Revelation chapter 11. It's when the two witnesses are on the earth, remember? Okay, And they're allowed to to be on the earth for three and a half years, and at the end of three and a half years, they're going to be killed, and they're going to be laying out in the streets of Jerusalem for everyone to see that they are dead. We've got webcams. Kind of makes sense now, right? The whole world's going to see it. The whole world's going to celebrate. These two witnesses of God, they're dead. Yeah, we did it. We conquered God, you know. But at the end of three and a half days, they're going to rise up from the dead. And they're going to send into heaven for every eye to see. But after that, the trumpet blast will go. And they'll go into the final three and a half years. And that's what we're talking about. Where this king is going to become revealed. Probably he was already on the scene before chapter 11. He's the guy who did the seven-year covenant. Okay? And all this is going on. And so some of these things might be playing out during those first three and a half years. Okay? Makes sense to me how it plays out from the book of Revelation. Okay? But then he's going he's to make himself known at the, in the middle of it. And that's when he's going to uh, um, reveal himself as believing that he is above all the gods. Okay? and that he's going to blaspheme um, the God of gods. You can read about that again in Revelation 12, 13, where you start talking about the, the, the mark of the beast. I'm not worried about the mark of the beast. People are always worried about it. Oh, I hope it's not the mark of the beast. It's not the mark of the beast. Don't worry about the mark of the beast right now. Do you see a temple in Jerusalem? It's, there's going to be one. Revelation chapter 11, there's going to be a temple in Jerusalem. I believe the word of God is literal. It's going to be a temple in Jerusalem. Okay? That's where the witnesses are going to be at. The witnesses, two witnesses are going to be in the earth. The mark of the beast doesn't happen until after that. Stop worrying about the mark of the beast, okay? When you see two witnesses throwing out fire from their mouth and they're, and they're holding back rain and everything, start worrying about it, okay? Start understanding that, woo we're like in the middle of this and I forgot all about the seals and trumpets, okay? And so we're there. So, but all this is playing out later on, okay? So, so we see that he's going to speak blasphemies against the God of gods. He's going to prosper till the wrath has been accomplished. I think words are important, Okay? He's going to prosper, or he's going to appear to prosper. Can we, can we agree with that one? I mean, from all intents and purposes on, in the world, he's going to look like what? He's getting his way, right? Everything's going right. He is calling himself God, and he's getting away with it. But it's all going to happen until when? The wrath has been accomplished, for what has been ter- determined shall be done. Who determined what? God determined. And what did God determine? His wrath is going to be poured out. When is his wrath being poured out? The final three and a half years of Daniel's vision. Do you get it? That's the, three, that fi- the second half of what is commonly referred to as a tribulation period. Okay? That's when the r- bulls of God's wrath are poured out upon men. Okay? And so at that time, he's going to look like, oh, he's getting away with it. But then all of a sudden, guess what? 
he ain't getting away with it. Always remember that. It may appear like sinners are getting away with it, but I promise you, they're not getting away with it. Everything you do, everything I do, everything anyone does, never escapes the notice of God. The wages of sin is death. That's not just for some people. That's for everybody. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's not just for some people. That's for everyone. If they choose to accept it, receive it. How cool is that? This guy's not going to accept it, right? So he's going to lift himself up as God. All this is going to play out until wrath is accomplished. He shall regard neither the God of his fathers nor the desire of woman, nor regard any God, for he shall exalt himself above them all. So let me jump into the middle one and take care of the distractions right away um, because there's a great debate on what does it mean that he has no desire for a woman? He must be a what? Homosexual. We don't know that. Because look at the context. The whole context of everything we've talked about right now is he's setting himself up as what? God. He's, he's above everything, okay? Now, could he be a homosexual? Yes. Ro Romans chapter 1, Romans chapter 1, if you read Romans chapter 1, when it talks about the wrath of God is being poured out upon men because men have exchanged the glory of God for the glory of create for the image of creation, right? And because of that, God hands us over to our own lasciviousness. This is Romans chapter 1. This is judgment, God's judgment. He hands us over to ourselves, okay? He says, you want to be God? You be God. See how that plays out. And so man begins to destroy himself, okay? And the end result of that, the, the fullness of man destroying himself and going against God in the midst of it is that man will exchange the use of a woman for the exchange of a man. Woman will exchange the use of a man for another woman. It's homosexuality, okay? So when you see that, you understand that the wrath of God is being poured out upon you. I look at the United States, and I see it, and I'm, we're not a blessed nation. We're a nation under the wrath of God. Deal with it. It's just how God's word declares it, okay? It's, we need to have our eyes opened up. So anyways, could he be? He could be. But in the context, I'm not necessarily like, oh, that's what he's going to be. I just see him, so, him as very focused, okay? He's all about himself, not about anybody else. Make sense? If, if he is homosexual, it's only because he's flying in the face of God, and he's doing it for a purpose because God is a creator God, and God designed man and woman to be the first. Make sense? So in my brain, because of everything else that's happening there with this fact that he's, he's magnifying himself against everything that's called God, that's just where he's at. Everything's about him. It's all about him. He's full of his own ego. Stop for a moment. Ooh, how does that make me feel about me? I mean, I'm not that guy. I know I'm not that guy. But is life all about you sometimes? And, 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 and you're willing to set aside the things of God, you know, because this pleases me. And so I set this one aside. Be careful. You know, Jesus said, judge not lest you be judged. And with what judgment you judge others, it shall be measured unto you. Be careful when you start pointing fingers at other people. Again, I said this in Sunday school. Three, three fingers are pointing right back at you. Okay? So anyways, so he's not going to regard this. But in their place, he shall honor a God of fortresses. Oh. Now, this is kind of interesting. So he has... A God. What, what is God? Now, I understand, I, I'm not saying who is God. You understand God, there's only one God. He's the creator of the heavens and the earth, okay? So let's get rid of the big G God for a moment. Well, we can't get rid of him, but you know what I'm saying. And let's talk about the little G gods. What are little G gods? Anything you worship or you allow to take over your life, okay? Good. Something that you have, you exalt higher than everything else. This guy is going to exalt what? Okay, fortresses. Bring it into my vernacular. Talk to me. What, what, is, he ta what is a fortress? It's military might. It's a military defensive thing. You know, in the days of Ronald Reagan, we've gone a long time since Ronald Reagan, haven't we? What, what was Ronald Reagan, the Ronald Reagan era, you military guys, okay? Gray-haired military guys like me, right? Okay, what were we developing even in the days of Ronald Reagan? Star Wars. Yeah. What was Star Wars? It was so we could what? We could defend ourselves from? 
ICBMs, boy, you're using all these terms, intercontinental ballistic missiles. Somebody from around the world sends off a missile, and we got satellites. Oh, well, sort of like satellites, but we got this Star Wars, there's this net up there where we're going to shoot them down from above. Okay? And so, so we can have them from below, we have them from above, and we've got this net covering us. We've got a fortress in the sky. That's the concept. Okay, now, again, am I saying this is it? I'm not saying this is it. But you can begin to see, I mean, in his day, think of Daniel getting this vision. Make sense? Does he have any concept that people are going to have satellites in the sky and they're going to be shooting missiles down? He doesn't even know what a missile is. I mean, he's, maybe he's, he might have a ballista, you know, with the Greeks. I mean, I don't even know if he knows what that is yet. But anyways, and so the catapult, right? And so missiles are flying, but, dude, we've gone way past catapults and ballistas. Okay? We got people... Ching! missiles from a long way away, right? And so if you were in Desert Storm, I was never in Desert Storm, I was in St. Louis um, doing Desert Storm, but those guys who were in the desert during Desert Storm, right, you continually heard what? It's got missiles. And you were hoping that our defense system would shoot those Scud missiles in the sky before they ever hit you, <laughs> the ground. Does it make sense? So we get that. So there's this fortress system. And, and this guy, he's honoring a god of fortresses, a god which his fathers did not know. That kind of tells us what? It's going to be something new. We'll talk about this thing in just a little bit later. But you all know what this thing is. I just hold it up, and you all know what it is. There's not, it's just glaring at you right now, right? But everybody knows it's a cell phone. This is an amazing tool. Now, you, can, you need to understand, my undergraduate work's computer science, okay? So I don't mean this to be braggadocio. I went to the number three school in the country in computer science. Yes? True statement? Yes. Okay? So when I was in the Army, I was an artificial intelligence expert, okay? We worked on this. This is called mobile subscriber equipment, okay? So we wanted the, we wanted the Army to be, able to, to, to be able to talk to each other on the run instead of having to stop and put up a satellite dish and, and, and then be able to talk. So we had a test between in Belgium and France and Italy and Germany, and we had guys driving around with these things. But they weren't this small. They were huge, okay? And so in order for them to work on it. Now, you guys, every single one of you, okay, let's do, let's do one of these uh, light tests. We're not going to put a light on. All right, if you got one, pull it out. Come on. If you got one, pull it out. Hold it up. Hold it up. This is totally nuts. Look at this, okay? Yeah, we can put them down, okay? Think about how many people. So this is... So now you're going to ask yourself, because you, I didn't state this yet, when was I in? I was in the military from 83 to 87 when I was active duty. We were t working on these in 1985 and 1986. Not even 40 years ago. Not even 40 years ago. Isn't this amazing stuff? Okay. So all this stuff is playing out. Okay. If I, if I would have told you, so, okay, I'm a computer guy. I was... In, 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 in the cutting edge of stuff, okay? When I was in school, when I was a junior, is the first time we had a screen. Even up until that point, I was working on a teletype machine, okay? Bob is a dinosaur, <laughs> okay? And so, am I right? Am I telling you oh, that's true? Yeah, you weren't there, that's right. <laughs> you, you weren't a computer guy. And so, anyways, <laughs> just an amazing thing for me. So this is like, okay? If you would have told me back when I was in college, that 40 years from now, everybody would be walking around with a, a computer in their hand that was more powerful than the biggest computer in the world at that time. Do you realize that what I've got in my hand wouldn't even fit in a building when I was in college? There was one computer, Cray Computer, up in Massachusetts that had a gigabyte. I got my first Mac SE, and it came with a 40 meg hard drive. But, baby, I paid for that to be upgraded to an 80 meg hard drive. 80 megs? Do you realize the presentation today that, you, that you're watching, including Jim's, it really went up when I added yours to it, is 35 megs? This one presentation would have taken up my Mac! <laughs> if you'd have told me that you'd be someplace and 60 to 70% of the people would have a computer sitting in their pocket, in their purse, whatever, that was more powerful. I said, you're nuts. And I was in the field. This guy's going to worship a god of fortresses. 
that his fathers didn't even know. That's how fast technology is changing right now. I don't think this is spir- uh, um, oh, figurative or whatever. I think this is real. I mean, technology is changing that fast. This guy is, is whenever he comes, it's going to be something that his fathers couldn't even comprehend. You're starting to think you live in the day? He shall act against the strongest fortresses with a foreign god. Okay? And so I have the word nakar and nakar because it says, which he shall acknowledge. But it's the word for foreign, okay, um, that's there. And so he's going he's to have this concept of that he's just not going to, he's going to disrespect it in a little bit, if you would, okay? Um, and he's going to advance the glory of this fortress. I, again, I can't tell you what it is. But there's going to be this god of war that he's going to really be promoting, okay? And he shall cause them to rule over many. I don't know who the them are. Could these be the guys in the Security Council of the United Nations? Could be. Could it be the, the, the EU? It could be. Could it be some other group right now? It could be. I don't know. Okay? But whoever these group, these guys are, he, because he has all power, he's going to be able to do what? Say again? Delegate. Delegate. He's going to give it to whoever he wants to, right? And so he's going to cause them to rule over many, and then he's going to divide the land. And the, Now, the the isn't in the Hebrew. That's important. Because if I tell you the land, instantly you're thinking what? Israel. It's not there. So he's going to divide land. He's just dividing land. He's, he's parsing up land for money. In other words, because he has all this power, he's going to give people rule over certain areas to fill his, his pockets. Because he can do it. And so behind the scenes, people are paying him money. And we saw that. If um, I don't know if I went into total details on that. But even with the Seleucids and Ptolemies, it's always been happening. Okay, So especially when we talk about the Maccabean Revolt. Um, if you remember in Tigus IV, um, D- deposed Ananias and brought in, um, uh, it wasn't Mattathias at that point, maybe it was, and then he got rid of him and brought in Jason. Anyways, and so it was all about money, okay? If you have authority, absolute authority, what? Corrupts, and so it's all about money. So those are his exploits. But now the end of the chapter gets into his end. And so we pick it up in verse 40. It says, at that time, at the time of the end of the king, of, at the time of the end, the king of the south shall attack him and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots, horsemen, and with many ships, and shall enter the countries, overwhelm them, countries plural, not country singular, okay, overwhelm them and pass through. He shall also enter the glorious land, and many countries, it's assumed there, shall be overthrown, but these shall escape from his hand. And then he talks about Edom, Moab, and Ammon, okay, so that they're going to escape. It's kind of interesting, Edom, Moab, that's South Africa, oh, South Africa. Saudi Arabia, Ammon is Jordan, okay? He shall stretch out his hand against the countries, and the land of Egypt shall not escape. He shall have power over the treasures of gold and silver and over all the precious things of Egypt. Also, the Libyans and Ethiopians um, at his heels shall follow, probably smart because they're following after him. But news from the east and from the north shall trouble him. Therefore, he shall go out with great fury to destroy and annihilate many, and he shall plant the tents of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end, and no one will help him. You get that? He's going to come to his end, and what? No one's going to help him. Why? Because no one liked him. No one liked him. Absolute power corrupts absolutely, and everybody hates you when you're corrupted absolutely. Okay. So the first thing, he shall respond to the attack of the king of the south with great fury, fury and force. Now, can I tell you exactly what this is? No, it hasn't happened. But I know it's going to be from where? From the south. As he is setting himself up as, as this big honcho, the, the big king, right? The, the, the god of the age, right? He's going to get an attack from the south, from Egypt, from Libya. I mean, I don't know, okay? But he's going to come at it, and he's going to squash it with great fury. And when he does it, he's going to enter in through the glorious land one more time, right? And so that's what we see. He shall enter into the glorious land and overthrow various countries. Now, we don't know what the various countries are, but clearly in Palestine right now, there isn't just Israel, right? You've got multiple different countries that are in there. Is that going to be how it plays out? I don't know. But again, we're given this so that if we're living in those days, we should what? We should know. We should be wise. We should be those who are of understanding. God gave us this detail. And just as we saw all the details being played out in the days of the, the, the Seleucids and the Ptolemies, these details are going to play out. And if I'm living in those days, 
I ought to be wise. Okay? He shall go out with great fury to destroy man upon troublesome news from the east and the north. Now, I think this is really kind of interesting, this one. Again, I'm not saying this is how it plays out, but in my brain, I think China and Russia. You know, Russia's doing, all, Putin's doing all this stuff right now, but he goes over and he starts talking to who? China, right? And so he, he's, he's coalescing his side. And so if I think of two, two major players from the north and from the east who might come against Israel and, come and, and try to, to go against everything, who would it be? Well, it would be Russia and China. Assuming that this guy, this king of the north, might be a European or Western, er, makes sense, then who would I think would go against them? Russia and China. Now, I'm not saying this is who it is, but that's a, if, it's, if it happened today, that's where I'm putting my money. Does that make sense? Okay. But I don't know. Um, he shall plant the tents of his palace between the seas and Jerusalem. Now, between the seas, that's talking about the what? The Mediterranean, okay, in Jerusalem. So he's going to not set up his palace necessarily in Jerusalem proper. That's kind of interesting because he's going to set himself up eventually in the temple as God. But his palace is going to be between Jerusalem and Caesarea, okay? And so he's going to, he's going to play it out somewhere in the Shephelah over there, and he's going to make himself a palace, okay? Again, I don't have a whole lot to tell you other than this is how it's going to play out, okay? And when he does this, though, all this is going to be playing out, and then his what's going to come? His end. Isn't it interesting, though, we're not told how his end comes? That's left a what? A mystery. Read the book of Revelation. Okay, and so we have this end that comes, okay? And so that's where we're left at. And so, but no one's going to what? Mourn him. Stop for a moment. When I die, is there going to be rejoicing? Is there going to be sorrow? Now, I hope there's a mixture of both. But the people who are rejoicing aren't rejoicing that I'm dead, that they're rejoicing that I'm with the Lord, okay? There's a difference, you know, in that the people that who are sorrowing are sorrowing because they loved me and they wanted me to be here. Not this guy. <laughs> there's no sorrow. No one's sorry about it. Everybody's glad he's gone, okay? I hope that's not you and me. So now we get to chapter 12, and we're going to fly through this quickly, okay? Description of the end time. What do we see off the bat? First of all, it's about your people, about Israel, okay? And that Israel is going to go through a period of time of great trouble, uh, such as never been upon them. And they've gone through what? A lot of trouble sometimes. But we're told very clearly in verse 1, it says, There be shall a time of trouble such as never since there was a nation, okay? But in the midst of this time, they're going to be what? They're going to be delivered. God's going to come, and he's going to deliver them. Again, go to Revelation 19. Think of the battle of Armageddon. All the nations are going to come against Israel at that time. Jesus is going to come out of the clouds. Okay, Yahweh incarnate on his thigh is written, Chesed uh, Nemet, faithful and true. Okay, he's going to come down on his white horse, and, and he's going to kill the nations with the sword that proceeds out of his mouth. Okay, so that's the battle of Armageddon, Armageddon. Okay, Revelation chapter 19. And so the people of Israel will be delivered. Okay, now I know that's concise, it's, you know, but that's what we're told. Okay, secondly, at some point, remember I told you how the mountaintops are just going to kind of come flying here right now, okay, and they're not necessarily in any specific order. There's going to be the resurrection of the dead. And so we see in the resurrection of the dead, some are being raised to perpetual life, okay, so it's, um, it is olam chayim, um, and so it's the, the concept of olam, again, for those who haven't been here in the past, is that which is just over the horizon, that which is just over the horizon. So as you're walking to, toward the horizon, when do you get past the horizon? You never do. It's perpetual, okay? So that's the concept of eternity in the, in the Hebraic mind, okay? It's, it's ever ongoing. It's perpetuity, okay? And so per, uh, perpetual life, but then it's perpetual disgraceful contempt. If you have a, a literal version of the Bible, you'll note that the end is in the Tadalsis. It's not there. It talks about to, the shame and, 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 and contempt. It's not there. Literally, it's shameful contempt, okay, is what, the way I take it. And so, it, but it's perpetuous, it's um, perpetual shameful contempt. Because when you die, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, you're going to go before the great white throne, right? And what's going to happen is, if your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, we talked about this in Sunday school, if your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, you get to go where? You get to go to heaven. How long do you get to live in the presence of God? Forever. That's life. Because God is life, De Deuteronomy chapter 30, okay? Choose God because God is life, okay? So they're going to be living in the presence of God because God is life. They're going to have perpetual life. 
Everyone, though, is going to have eternal existence. I always I said everybody has eternal life. You know, what? You have eternal existence. Everyone is going to be raised up in the end. And you're either going to go to be with God, or you're going to be go to the bad place and not with God, right? Okay? And so, that's called disgraceful contempt. You are going to get, if you, if you reject Jesus as your Savior, you're going to get what you wanted. You're going to be by yourself. You're going to be your own king. You're going to be your own God forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And there's not going to be you and your buddies hanging out and, um, and, and playing games in hell. You're going to be by yourself. That's what Jesus said, Mark chapter 9. Go check me out, okay? That it's going to be where the worm dies not and the fire dies not. Okay? There's going to be in a period of darkness. You think, how do you have fire with a darkness? I don't know. But whether you're blind or whatever, there's not going to be any concept that you're with people. You're going to be by yourself. It's not a party. Now, what's really interesting is this is known in Daniel. This is not a New Testament teaching. Even Job talks about, I know that after I die, that when my flesh is destroyed, that in my flesh I will see God face to face. Job lived during the days of Noah. Isn't that kind of cool? So, so the concept of everyone existing after death, going through the portal of death to eternal existence, has always been. So don't let people lie to you. Oh, that's just a Christian teaching. It's not a Christian teaching. It goes way back. Everybody has always understood it from the creation of time. They understood that you are a spiritual being, that you're made in the image and likeness of God. So this is how it plays out. Thirdly, we see the sealing of the book. Again, I don't have time to go to 1 Thessalonians 5. We did last week. But we are told to be of the, the day, not of the night. We're supposed to be those who have understanding, not those who are of, of ignorance. And we're told, Daniel is told twice here in, in, in this area, okay, both in verse 4 and verse 9, that what he is writing is supposed to be sealed up. Look what it says, sealed up until the end. Sealed up until the end. Here's my thought process on this. This is total conjecture, how I understand it. I think it's going to be start to be understood in the end times. I think it's going to be being opened up. It's going to, that, that stamp that says that it's, it's to be sealed, it's going to start opening up. Why? Because things are going to start happening, and you're going to say what? Wow! I, th I think I'm here. Just like the, the guys, if you remember last week when we said there was, there was the individuals who, who, who thought that they could fulfill the prophecy, and then they failed, okay? So be careful of it. Because when we start to see things happening, okay, I think Israel becoming a nation in 1948, Hosea chapter 6. I think it's a fulfillment of part of Hosea chapter 6. I am so excited about living in these days. I'm fearful of living in these days because I know it's coming. But I think if I live to a, stand, a, a good old age, Jesus is coming in my lifetime. I'm not going to give you a day. I'm not going to give you an hour. I'm not going to give you a time. But I think, just so you know, that's where I'm at. I think Jesus is coming in my lifetime. Okay. I really honestly believe I've said that for, what, since the 90s? Okay? So yeah, Brian, you remember that. Okay? I've never put a day on it. I have thoughts in my brain. I'm a math guy. I'm a computer guy. Bible gives you a whole lot of details, a whole lot of details, and I'm just going to leave it that, okay? That there's a whole lot of details in the Word of God. And so, yeah, do I have concepts in my brain? I do have concepts in my brain. But I think it's coming in my lifetime. I still have kids. i got grandkids. I'm putting kids through college. You know what I'm saying? So you still continue to live, but you better know that Jesus could be coming today. Okay? So, till the end of the time, could there be the unsealing? The character of the culture. There is going to be, okay, here's where we go, right? There's going to be an increase in culture. I'm going to do all these at one time, right? An increase in culture, and there's going to be an increase in what? Say again? Travel. Do you realize that right now? So, Jim, I was going to ask you this when you were, you were sharing earlier, but it's, it's Sunday, and it's I won't tell you what time it is. Don't look at the clock, guys. Um, anyways, um, but Tuesday, where are you going? Argentina. So three days from now, he'll actually be in Argentina. Um, he'll be there for a couple um, days, and he's going to come back for a couple days, and he's going to turn around. He's going to go to Peru. Kind of cool. But you know what? That sounds pretty good. But at this very moment, while we're standing here, I made the decision that I want to go to Hong Kong. And so I could open up my app, and I could go to my Delta app, and I could go to, to Delta app right now, and I could set up a, 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 a flight, and I could come out of Atlanta, so it's only two hours away. If I wanted to, I could actually, if I had the money, I'd fly out of Augusta, right? Okay, but flying out of Augusta on Sunday, the Masters don't do that. It's cost, it, it just a whole lot of money. So I'll, I'll have Marsha drive me to Atlanta, okay? And so I'm going to pick a flight around 4 o'clock. Makes sense? Because uh, we'll be out here by 2, don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> 
Anyways, so I get out, and we're going to go to Atlanta, <laughs> right? And so I could be on the plane, and then I could get a direct flight to Hong Kong from Atlanta, and I could be in Hong Kong by when? Tomorrow morning, which may be tonight or whatever, I don't know how it plays out with the time change, right? But within 24 hours or right now, I could be standing in Hong Kong. And I would have done it all from this phone. Now, but I'm standing here, and, and I'm thinking to myself, well, I don't have any place to stay when I get there, right? So I want to look up. I want to get myself reservations before I go, don't I? So while I'm standing here on this little device, while I'm standing here, I'm going to go to Hong Kong, and I'm going to look up hotels, and I'm going to look up reviews. Because I, I, I don't want to stay at a junk dive place. I want to stay at a good place. Don't you want to stay at a good place? Because money's no option. We already said that our father's going to to slot the cattle for me, right? So, so I'm going to look at all these places. I want to find out what their amenities are, how they do this. You know, do they have a room? I just did this because we're going to go to the Ark Encounter. So last night I'm going through hotels, and, and there was one room left for this one place, and I was like, yes, it's mine. And so they told me they had one room left of the kind I wanted. Isn't that kind of, I mean, talk about details. Information is abounding. But you know what? I want to get there when I, I want to impress the people, and I want to be able to talk in their language a little bit. I want to be able to say hi to them in Chinese or Hong Kongese or whatever that is. Is it the same? <laughs> Cantonese. All right, you've got to talk to a Chinese guy if you want to know. Anyways, and so, so Cantonese. So I forget Brian knows. He probably doesn't know. Anyways, and so <laughs> Mrs. Wu, you probably know how to say hi. There you go. And so... But I want it so that when I get there, it's going to tell me. So while we're standing here, I'm going to look up. How do I say what she just said? Um, <laughs> and, and I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to save it to my phone so that when I'm on the the, the plane tonight. In fact, I've, I'm I'm so antiquated. I could actually have internet while I'm on the plane now. I forgot about that. <gasps> Anyways, <laughs> see, in my day, you couldn't do that. You had to shut it all off. Anyways, but I can I can be practicing my Chinese the whole way over this, so I could, you know, it was Korean, I could say, come Sunday da, chama nail, you know, and I could say different things, and I know I just totally blew it, David, didn't I? But that's all right, it's all good. And you taught me other ones, and they're just gone. Anyways, um, so, anyways, so, but I could, from this little device, many will be what? Running to and fro. And information is going to abound. Ask any question, and turn on Siri first. Siri, how can I Google? I don't want to say that out loud because I don't think I have it on. I don't like it listening to me, but I'm sure it is. It's always listening. Just remember that, okay? How do I do this? And then all of a sudden, God will come up. Oh, I, did I say that wrong? Google comes up. God will, how do I do this? God will, how do I do that? God will, think about it. Now, I know I'm doing that on purpose. Do you get it? Because sometimes we trust Godel more than we trust God. And I ask Godel before I ask God. Just be careful. I, again, I'm not telling you never to use it. And I'm not saying this is, this is Satan in a box. Okay? But man, I'm telling you, I could never have imagined this in my day. I thought we'd use laptops. I thought phones would come through laptops. Ha! Was I wrong? It's a good thing I'm not a prophet or son of a prophet because I totally missed that one. IBM missed it too, by the way. That's why you hardly hear of IBM anymore. They missed two, two big decisions, and they missed them both, and they became antiquated. So, but there's going to be then an increase as well um, in the disparity. Where am I missing this, Mark? I don't know how, why it's... Oh, okay. Got it. Um, in... Okay, an in increase in the disparity between the wise and the wicked, okay? And it says that then that the wise, okay, they're going to be purified and refined. Why does it keep telling us this? <laughs> I mean, think about it. Isn't that how the last one ended? And those who are understanding will be what? Purified and refined. And now we're talking about the wise. They're going to be what? Purified and refined. Why do I have to be continually reminded that these days as they play out, if you know Christ, what's it mean for you? Trouble. Purification, refinement, persecution. But you shall also what? Understand. If you're looking to God and you're seeking wisdom from God, he will give it to you. And you will understand the days that you're in. The wicked, though, they're going to continue to walk in wickedness, darkness. And they're not going to understand. They're going to be totally oblivious to what's going on. Okay? So, in the end, we're going quickly through this because I don't know. 
we're told two different things here. We're told a times, time, half a time. That's the three and a half years. So this part period we've been talking about is the last three and a half years of Daniel's vision. Okay? We know that. Okay? But then we're told, and we know from earlier, so I can't go all the way back there, but we know because I went through all the details, remember, of lunar days and lunar months and all that kind of stuff. Okay? 42 lunar months, three and a half years. Okay? There's going to be 1,290 days. That's 43 lunar months because 1,260 days is 42 lunar months. Okay? But now we're told about a 1,290-day period, which is an extra lunar month. And then we're told about a 1,335-day period, which is an extra 45 days on top of that. There's a whole lot of conjecture what those things are. Administrative period when Jesus is setting up his kingdom and all that kind of stuff. I don't got a clue. Make sense? But 100,000 years from now, I'll let you know. Okay? When we're in heaven and, 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 and it's all played out, we get together and say, what do you think, Bob? I don't have to think anymore. It happened. This is what happened. Say again? Remember yeah, remember those 40 divided days? Ah, oh, that's what he's going to do. That's exactly right. You know what, though? If it happens the way I think it's going to happen, I think. I believe that we're taken up before the final seven years. I'm not worrying about those days. I'm already taken up. Again, the temple even hasn't been built. So even if I'm wrong, do you understand? And, and it happens later, I'm looking for the temple to be built. And if that, I mean, I'm looking for two witnesses on the earth. Do you get it? So Jesus could come back at any time he chooses to come back. Do you get that? He's not stuck to Bob saying, oh, this is how it's going to be. No, he doesn't care a, a, a whip about what Bob thinks when, he, when he's coming back. In fact, Jesus said, no man knows the what? The day or the hour, except my father only. So in the end, Jesus is coming back to earth. Do you really, really, honestly, truly, do you really believe it? Do you really believe Jesus is coming back? I do. How does the return of Christ impact your life? Does it? It should. Has it changed what you do in life? I'd like to say that on you were on the dirt road in Rwanda, that somewhere along the line you realized what? God's purpose and God's ways were higher than your ways and your purpose, and you submitted to his right? It changes your life. When you, first, when you begin to realize that God's plan is, is the right plan and it's going to happen the way it changes your life, it changes everything you do. How does the study of end time prophecy affect your decisions today? I know some of it may seem very boring. Some of it may seem very exciting, but if it doesn't change your life, it's meaningless. If it doesn't change your life, it's meaningless. God's word is given to us to transform our lives, not to make us smart and, and wise in our own eyes and, and proudful and boastful by our knowledge. People ask, how do you know all that? Because I'm studying the word of God, but it's not about me. Even this morning, God, in my quiet time, told, it's not about me. This is not for the glory of Bob. This is for the glory of God. This is all the things that God has revealed because he wants all of us, not just Bob, all of us to know it. Do you get it? And there's nothing special about me. I promise you, there is nothing special about me. I have, I have not told you anything that you couldn't read yourself. To whom much is given, much is required. You honestly don't need me to teach you. God wants us to congregate together, but you honestly shouldn't need me to teach you. The Holy Spirit is the one who will lead and guide you into all truth. If you spend time in God's word, and you spend time studying it, and you spend time researching it, Guess what? God will reveal. He'll be true to his word, and he will reveal it to you. What is your view of the purification and refinement that is to come? Is it exciting, <laughs> or is it not so exciting? It should be both. I'm not necessarily looking forward to being beat up or be being beheaded. I don't think I'm looking forward to the moment, if I'm one of the ones who are honored by being beheaded for the name of Christ, I don't think I'm going to be looking forward to my head being placed upon that thing. Okay, And I'm probably going to be total like... A little bit when I hear the shh, but it's going to be what? Over with. But I can tell you, standing here right now, and I've told my kids in the past, and I have a little thing from Jessica that she wrote down. If we get into those days, if we get into those days, and, and, and someone's got a gun pointed to my head, and they're asking my kid to deny Christ, or they'll pull the trigger, just to look at me and say, Daddy, I love you, and I know that you're going to be better off when I say, I will not deny the name of Christ. Because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That's where we need to be. Is there then a need to change the way you think 
and therefore change the way you act. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you for your mercy, your grace, your long-suffering. Lord, you're not willing that any should perish, but that we should all come to the knowledge of the truth. Thank you for what you've done in Jesus. Lord, I pray that if anyone is here today that doesn't know you as their Savior, Lord, that you draw them to yourself. That just even the concept that you have a plan and a purpose which you have revealed so in such detail in history and you will in the days ahead, Lord, that they call upon your name and be saved. But Lord, for those who are called by your name right now, those who are your children, Lord, who maybe live in flippant lives, Lord, that you would convict them and that you would challenge them and that they would want to be committed lives to you and maybe glorify your name. Oh, Father, receive the glory in us and through us. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.